Hello and welcome to this recorded webinar, Brooks Connections, mentoring Q&A with Dr. Judy Gannon and me, Dan O'Driscoll. The purpose of this webinar is to relaunch Brooks Connections by talking about mentoring and the benefits of getting involved in the Brooks Connections programme. So quick introductions. My name is Dan O'Driscoll. I graduated in 2006. I run engagement consultancy where I'm an executive coach and consultant working with charities, universities and the public sector. I also volunteer as the head of the Oxford alumni chapter where myself and the other alumni chapter members, Joe, Plassey and Ella, encourage alumni from Oxfordshire to engage and support the university with mentoring being one of our aims. And I'm delighted that with me this evening, we have Dr. Judy Gannon. Um, I met Judy last year on the ILM Level 7 course, Executive Coaching and Mentoring. Uh, Judy is a senior lecturer at Oxford Brooks Business School. She leads the doctorate in coaching and mentoring in the International Centre for Coaching and Mentoring Studies and is also deputy head of doctoral programmes for the school. Judy joined academia after several years experience in the hospitality industry and Judy acts as an advocate for mentoring scheme managers and as an advisor to a number of mentoring and coaching initiatives. In 2019, Judy was recognised by the European Mentoring and Coaching Council, EMCC, uh, with a Global Mentoring Award for her contribution to mentoring research and dissemination. Uh, welcome, Judy, and thank you again so much for joining us this evening. Great to be here, Dan. Thanks for asking me. My pleasure. Uh, so before we start, um, I thought it would be helpful for our audience just to cover what Brooks Connections is. And if you didn't already know, Brooks Connections is a career mentoring scheme where Oxford Brooks students and recent graduates are given an opportunity to be mentored by Oxford Brooks alumni. Mentoring is available to all Brooks students, regardless of year of course or year, and to all graduates who've graduated in the last three years. The mentors are Oxford Brooks alumni in professional roles who have volunteered to share their knowledge and experience with students and recent graduates and the platform has now launched so you can get involved from today and we'll be sharing some details after this recording as how you can get involved but I'm delighted that Judy you've joined us this evening and, and Judy I, I thought that what we would do is just have a conversation around mentoring and the Brooks Connection scheme um, just to make sure that for any students or recent graduates who are interested about getting involved with mentoring that they are a bit more informed um, about what's involved. Absolutely. So, fantastic so should we start off with a really simple one um, what is mentoring? Ooh, well, mentoring is really just a developmental relationship, but I say just with maybe some um, apostrophe marks around that. Um, I Because developmental relationships can be really transformational in our lives. So when we're talking about mentoring, we're talking really about sitting down with somebody, of course, that may be virtually at the minute, um, but spending some time with somebody who has, um, as a mentee, we're really looking for, for mentoring where it's um, somebody can be a sounding board for us, listen to what we're thinking about doing and help us unpack some of those things, explore them in a little bit more depth and think about ways that we might move forward with our lives. So, some mentoring can be very goal-driven. Um, other mentoring can be much more about how we're trying to sort out what we want to do rather than pursuing a very specific goal or ta target. And sometimes there is um, a bit of confusion between coaching and mentoring, and sometimes those terms can be quite interchangeable so yeah. I think it'd be helpful if you're just able to distinguish between the two for any students and, and recent graduates who, who might be considering mentoring. Right well that's not always an easy task 
I've had students who've done whole doctorates on what's mentoring, what's coaching, and that the, the, the challenge really sits uh, around the issue that there's a lot of the skills we see that mentors use are very similar to the skills that coaches use. So, th- so that's why there's a huge amount of overlap in, in these developmental relationships. But generally, we're talking about mentoring relationships have a much more variable length of duration. And they tend not to be as um, focused or um, performance based or have a specific ob- objective or agenda. So much more coaching tends to be have a, a very clear agenda. There's also much more of a tendency around mentoring for the mentor to have had some experience of what the mentee is going through. So maybe the mentors had some experience of transitions into and out of education or into a particular profession or sector. So so generally, there's there tends to be more of a shared experience in a mentoring relationship, though, that, though there are some exceptions with that in, in specific areas of mentoring. I think it's really helpful just to, to make some of these to distinguishing factors um especially when students are coming and they might yeah. come from a, a specific um sector or their degree um or their role might be in a in a particular area so I think that's just really yeah. helpful just to unpack some of that and and why would someone want to be mentored what are some of the benefits of of working with a mentor well I think some of the things that really stand out for me is that the evidence around mentoring is that it's hugely beneficial to mentees. It's also hugely beneficial to mentors, but if we stick with the mentees at the minute, for mentees, it's a really great space for us as mentees to be able to understand what our thinking is and whether and test out some of our ideas, explore them with somebody who doesn't have an agenda. Uh, in any of our thinking or decision making and you know sometimes we've all got great friends who are actually you know great sounding boards but are we ever actually completely sure that you know they 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 have no um kind of preconceived ideas of what we really should be doing in our future so so that's really where mentoring can be really invaluable and also there's sometimes a bit of wisdom of being able to sit down with somebody who's who's tackled issues in their own life and who's there to be able to not say this is the way to do it but is there to be able to say well you could do it like this but how else might you think about it and if that happens what might you do then so a mentor can really create that space for the mentee to be able to explore some of their options in a bit more detail, Um, think about how they might tackle issues along the way towards a particular um, uh, objective, and also give them some scenarios that, that might help them build a little bit more resilience and sustainability in achieving whatever the mentee wants to achieve. I think that piece around having the time and the space is very prevalent at the moment, certainly over the last getting on to um, over 18 months now and just having that time for yourself to to have a, a one on one conversation with someone to discuss the topics of the day is, is, is so important. And kind of linked to that is how would you describe what a, what a good mentoring relationship looks like and, and, and how that can be developed? Um, good mentoring relationship um, has to be based upon some trust and rapport, but you have to establish that trust and rapport. So I'd always encourage mentors and mentees to have really um, clear conversations about what they want to get out of their relationship. The mentor should really think about why do I want to mentor? What do I want to bring to a mentoring relationship? And how am I placed to be a good listener, ask some questions, and offer some constructive feedback and challenge? 
for the mentee, the mentee needs to have a think about what do I want to get out of mentoring? What might I benefit from, from having somebody who's, you know, not in my, doesn't know me, but who is there to listen to me and is there to help me sense check some of the stuff I'm thinking about in terms of moving forward with my life and my career. So um, there needs to be a bit of thinking individually before the mentoring relationship starts. And once you've done that thinking, then you can start to have a conversation about, well, I'm hoping as the mentee, you might be able to help me with these things. And as a mentor, then you can share what you can actually bring to the mentoring relationship and where you might be able to really offer that support and sounding board space. And then it's about really thinking about how do we progress? You know, what shape is our relationship going to be? How often are we going to meet? How long are we going to meet for? How much challenge does the mentee want? And also, um, are there any subjects that are going to be off limits or issues of confidentiality? And there's some good tips I know that Brooks Connections um, have got to help both mentors and mentees guide their relationships. I think that's, again, really important around um, confidentiality and mm. talking about things that maybe the mentee doesn't want to explore, um, but yeah. having that honest conversation and setting those expectations at the very start. And Judy, would you be able to share that the first time that you were mentored and, and, and why you wanted to get involved and, and work with a Ooh. mentor? Um, that's quite a challenging one because I think I've been quite, quite lucky to be mentored. And of course, mentoring can have, we often come across informal mentoring relationships and formal mentoring relationships. And early on in my, as a student, I was, I was mentored by um, an alumni um, when I was at Huddersfield. And then later on, when I became an academic myself, I was mentored by other academics and then also by alumni when I was in the Oxford School of Hospitality Management. I think really the value that I found was trying to some, I think particular mentoring was really valuable to me when I was trying to make sense of what I did with, you know, just about to graduate from my undergraduate programme or just about to achieve my doctorate what should I be thinking next in terms of publications or moving forward with my academic career or thinking about actually how I brought my um, doctoral studies to life and actually made it meaningful for the hospitality and tourism industry and for HR practitioners because that's what I was focused upon so it's really at those key points and I think it's really great for students when you're moving um when you may be starting out in your subject area you know what's this going to mean for me where might I take it it's often a great point to reach out to a mentor then and have a chat because they can sense check you they can connect you with the sector or the subject matter that you're um interested in and that you're you're studying but also as you kind of come to that point of actually what am I really going to do with this that's also when a mentor can be really pivotal and, and kind of helping you sort out, is this the right move for me? What else could I explore? Um, and what are some of the challenges of moving into particular sectors or particular roles or pursuing particular graduate management development programs, for example? And I think over the last um, 18 months with, with the pandemic, there's been so many states of flux with with people switching sectors yeah. and looking for new roles or reassessing and re-evaluating um their own lives or what are they yes. hoping to achieve and it'd be interesting to get your opinion on whether the pandemic has brought mentoring into focus more with people exploring ways to develop themselves yeah i mean i really think this is relevant for mentors and for mentees because i think we've all kind of you know, we've all had our foundation shattered. It's, you know, it's it's turned our, our world upside down as we knew it. Um, so it's, it's really valuable to kind of have those check-ins with people who we haven't spent lockdown with, maybe. 
<laughs> and and who are don't necessarily know us through our our, our pre COVID days and our during COVID and as we're, where we're emerging out uh, post COVID. So I think kind of those mentoring relationships and that that sense of also how we're all getting a sense of how things have changed and what's what are the the spaces and opportunities that we can begin to think about um we can move into and where our skill sets might work best uh, where the demands might be um what the shape of different sectors is going to be um how they're building back and actually i think this is where it's probably really interesting for mentors and mentees to get together and and share a lot of that you know learning and mentoring relationships isn't one way I mean the traditional kind of view of mentoring is you know it's the the wise mentor pe- passing on you know wisdom to to the younger less experienced mentee but actually there's there's much more evidence now that there's there's aspects of um of our world that that mean that the, the learning goes two ways um, so technological advances issues of inclusivity and diversity are meaning that actually the development um, and the learning and mentoring relationships is much more about mutuality um, for both partners absolutely and that and that whole piece around mentoring not just being a a one way relationship and the the mentor learning just as much from the mentee and I think it's a really important point that uh, that mutuality of benefit which is um, a a really helpful phrase to use when people are thinking about entering into a mentoring relationship is it's not just one way it it flows and information and conversation flows in both directions and when uh, an individual is being mentored do do they always have to have a goal that they're working towards or or can the relationship be more fluid what's what's your opinion on that and and what would you um, give us some advice to to students and recent graduates so uh, I think this is a really challenging area because uh, often one of the, the 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 biggest transformation I've seen for mentees is where they haven't quite been able to articulate a goal. They've done some thinking though. You know, as a mentee, I would never suggest you kind of turn up at a mentoring relationship and go, I'm a blank canvas, tell me what to do. That's not going to work. So it's about having some options and having done some thinking, but pursuing a definitive goal um, isn't always necessary. For some people, there is a pursuit and and this can you know this is where the kind of range of mentoring relationships are um is really vast because for some people who have a very clear technical almost that their mentoring question then and goal to kind of pursue from mentoring their mentoring relationship can be you know actually quite swift it doesn't have to be a long relationship but for other people it's much um it's much more that you start to have the conversations that makes you question what you thought you want to do because somebody's saying well have you thought about that and do you know about this organization and explore what they do and explore what they do and 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 then let's have a chat with what you find out and it's that kind of collaborative conversation where there's a bit of challenge there's a bit of insight a bit of wisdom that that really helps somebody who who wasn't too sure didn't have a definitive goal but knew that they they needed to start to make some decisions and also then from from a from a mentor's side it's it's making sure that you are um linked and partnered with with the right person so like you say to not go in with a with no idea about what you'd want to achieve to have at least some idea so that you can be linked and partnered with with the right person and um, who can help yeah. and support you and, and it'd be great to to get an example from you when when you've mentored someone and and what the result of that mentoring has been for the mentee but but also you as the mentor kind of circling back to that two-way relationship Ooh. we spoke about in a bit yeah i i suppose um 
you know, some of the kind of mentoring that I've done has, has been much more around what have people, what options have people wanted to explore? And, um, you know, early on in my, in my academic career, I spent a lot of time talking to students who were trying to decide what was the best move for them. And sometimes there's a lot of pressure on students to, as, as they finish a bachelor's in particular, it's, there's a lot of pressure to, to get onto a graduate management development programme, for example. Um, and in particular in the sector I was working in, in, um, in Osham at the time in Oxford School of Hospitality Management, you know, it was, it was actually about getting, supporting students to actually see the real range of sectors that they could move into and not kind of just jump towards the nearest scheme that that seemed to fit but so so and that but that involves an awful lot of spade work and groundwork in terms of how do I articulate my skills to an employer because you're more likely to be um exploring um you know, competing against people who were maybe already in the organisation. So I, I think that some of the real work that I've done as a, a mentor at that stage was very much about, you know, how do you articulate your skills? How do you talk about how you tackle problems? Um, how do you communicate those things on a CV or in an application form? And then how do you get them across in... Um, yeah, in an interview or an assessment centre or, you know, a, a, um, a job preview situation. So, so that was, you know, an area that I, I, I tended to work in a lot. I think a lot of the mentoring that I do at the minute is, is much more around kind of the challenging area of what, how people want to develop their, um, their academic careers and uh, that's also got a challenge in that there's lots of different ways to develop academic careers or develop careers as um, coaches and mentors. And people are often in a phase of their life where they've had an awful lot of work experience. And it's about how do they put together that portfolio career? What's it going to mean in terms of, you know, are there particular organisations that they should gain accreditation from? that will help them develop their client bases um, as coaches, for example? Are they going to really specialise in a sector? Um, so again, I, I suppose it's actually my research background that, that becomes, because it's, it's a lot of questions for me and getting um, the mentees that I work with it across the range to really think about um, doing the research that helps them make the best decisions over the longer term. I think that's just really interesting to hear that, Judy, and, um, and, and, and just some of that insight that you gave uh, as well. And I think what would be helpful for, for students and, and recent graduates mm. is when it comes to the commitment, and, and you spoke, you touched on this a little bit earlier, about you know, does, reg, does mentoring have to be a regular commitment or can it be those one-off sessions is there a is there a happy medium what what would what would your advice be on on that commitment side of things I think it's really important to try and get a sense of whether it's going to be a shorter sharper you know conversation that might be a one-off or, or or just maybe a couple of conversations because um there's there's quite a definitive area to, dis, uh, to explore there. I think for other students, what can be quite interesting is you think it's going to be quite a short conversation. You're going to get an answer. And actually it involves a lot more exploration and it's better to kind of unpack some of these issues over the course of a relationship. And one mentoring conversation is going to lead to another one and another one and another one. And, you know, it, that thing of kind of Rome wasn't built in a day um, and our own personal development, especially in challenging times as they are now, um, 
it's going to take some real thought and exploration and um, querying and challenge to really help us determine what our clear steps are to move forward. So um, I, th I think that those are kind of the things that I would I would hate anybody to think, you know, it's it's got to be a long term relationship or it's got to be a short term relationship. I would really urge mentors and mentees to have a good think about. Let's see what the conversation is about and then let's recontract or, or, you know, form an agreement so we can move forward. And, you know, maybe we'll have maybe this is just a one off conversation, but we'll check up on each other in a couple of months. And then after a couple of months, it's actually actually it would be quite useful to kind of, you know, have maybe a fortnightly check in and, you know, explore how things are going. I think that's very much linked to um, what you mentioned earlier around what makes a good mentoring relationship and, and, and being really clear at the very start as to what this relationship is. Uh, and you also mentioned around trust uh, and actually building that trust. Trust can take a, a while to, to build up to, to have a really effective yeah. relationship. So I think it's as helpful for, for um, uh, the attendees to, to really think about that when they're entering into yeah. that relationship. And, and do you always have to be mentored on your own? Can you be mentored as, as part of a group? I think it'd be quite helpful to, to hear, are there different options or is it very much a, an individual relationship? Typically it's an individual relationship, but there's some, there's some great evidence um, that actually mentoring in a group can be really quite transformational because maybe you're sitting there as a mentee and you don't want to be the one to ask that question, but somebody else will. Um, so there's a lot of really there's there's some great shared learning in group mentoring um, and you know the response that you get from a mentor will often trigger another question from another mentee and that I, I, I know from several mentors when they've done group mentoring as well they found it really invigorating because there's so much going on there and they're getting so much insight and feedback um, that, and then they're able to share even more of, you know, their own stories, um, offer a little bit of insight about, you know, what an employer's perspective might be or what a seasoned professional's perspective might be, but also reflect on the change they've seen in their own areas as well, which I think is often you know, very helpful for, for, for mentors and mentees to reflect that change that the alumni have seen over the, over the time that they've um, been working um, beyond their university days. That's really interesting. And I think um, for any opportunity to have that group mentoring uh, with, with um, uh, multiple mentors and, and mentees is, is really fascinating. I think, again, just a different type of relationship and uh, different outcomes as well will, will, will come out of that. And finally, what would be your, your top tips for students and, and recent graduates to take away from mentoring this evening? So I suppose my top tip would be for especially those who might be quite young graduates, to really not be intimidated by their mentors and to be curious about what their mentors think are the best opportunities out there at the minute. Um, and, and also to see beyond, I think, you know, one of the, one of the areas that um, I, I, I often reflect upon is when we, when we place relatively young people with older mentors, it's a bit like, oh, they're going to tell me what my mum and dad tell me. But actually, because they don't have that relationship with you, they can say something completely different. And they'll, there's wisdom and insight there. And they are genuinely interested in what you want to do and your perspective so you can have conversations that are very freeing and very um you know really expand your mindset 
and challenge the way that you think that people are going to tell you, you know, what you should be doing or the way things are. So, so there's a great kind of freedom often, but it, it involves being quite brave, I think. Um, and one of the things that I, I, I would encourage is both mentors and mentees, but particularly mentees to just be curious ask your mentor you know why did you decide to do that why did you take that next job what was your thinking when you went through your particular because that also helps the mentor be able to explore some of their decision making and then help the mentee explore some of their thinking about how they might move forward so there's some really interesting aspects there if you can go with quite a lot of curiosity to be able to explore somebody else's career, it can help you understand some of the challenges and thinking that you might encounter when you're starting off on this career journey. I think it's it's really a, a great takeaway um, that piece around being brave and, and, and putting yourself out there to, to 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 try something new, to be curious. Um, and to to put your full self into it because mentoring can be absolutely transformative and and hugely beneficial so thank you so much for this evening Judy I found it fascinating and I'm sure the students and and recent graduates will too as well and I know that you've pulled together a really helpful top tip sheet which will be sent out after this recording Um, Along with that will be more information uh, and details about how to join Brooks Connections, the time commitment, how to find a relevant mentor and um, how can I navigate the the platform. So thank you again, Judy. It's been a pleasure speaking with you um, and sharing your insight and and expertise. Um, I hope that everyone listening has found this helpful, finding out more about mentoring and how you can get involved. And if you have any questions, then please email alumni at brooks.ac.uk. Thanks again for listening. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.